first of all, the speech. Claire has prepared something and we're going to listen to you. Um, good evening. So, Lena, this is my speech for you and for all of you uh, nominees and bloggers and bloggers through the world. <clears throat> so, I'm very honored um, to present the Best of Blog Award for Best of Blog in 2011 to Lena Ben Mehani, Many. <laughs> whose blog, The Tunisian Girl, um, was elected best blog in Bonn last April by the international jury. Um, before congratulating Lena, I'd like to thank and to congratulate uh, the Deutsche Welle for the best of blog um, awards because it's uh, not only a showcase for good blog and quality blogs, but it's an asylum. It's a, it's, um, a, ref a shelter for blogs who are not necessarily beautiful or popular or do not have a lot of I like on Facebook, but are very important, as we've seen. On December 23rd in two, two, last year, 2010, when everyone was very busy, it was Christmas and holidays, a handful of Tunisian bloggers wrote for the first time about a remote town in Tunisia that no one had ever heard about, Sidi Bouzid. People there were angry and were taken to the streets. Out of despair, one man had set himself on fire a few days earlier, on the December the 17th, and his name was and is Mohamed Bouazizi. Very few Tunisians in Tunisia knew what had happened, what was happening in Sidi Bouzid, just because Tunisian media were censored, and Tunisian blog talking about that kind of news were censored as well. Now, no one knew that it would be the spark to what is now called the Arab Spring at the time. But Lina was one of the bloggers in Tunisia that wrote about it. When she opened the blog, a Tunisian girl in 2007 or 8, I don't know exactly, Lina wrote in a biography profile, assistant teacher of um, linguistic department at the University of Tunis and a blogger, mainly blogging about freedom of speech and human rights. And that's not the best or the shortest route to become a popular blogger, but in her case, I don't think she cared a lot about her stance because anywhere a blog was censored in Tunisia, meaning it was invisible to most Tunisian eyes unless you, know, you knew how to go around the censorship system. So, although I've, this is the very first day I've met Lena in real life today, I had never seen her before, but somehow, reading her blog, and that's a very common thing most of you probably experience, when you follow blogs, you have the you're under the impression that you know them. So since I followed her blog, this is what I think I know about Lena. That um, she would like to look her age, and not 18, that she sometimes wear pink sandal with turquoise socks in them. I've seen the pictures on the blog. That she um, understand the Egyptian dialect because the, t the Egyptian soap operas are broadcast on Tunisian television. No? Well, <laughs> she is a compulsive writer, and she wrote that uh, before opening a blog, she used to sometimes get up at night and write a couple of things on a, on a paper, on a piece of paper at night. And she's shy, I know that. She's not very at ease in you know, big cries like this, and she prefers to be behind the screen. And she says on the blog that the word militant, that is activist, you know, in French, is a sacred word for her. And she does not identify herself as a real militant activist. But most importantly, what we, readers of a blog, know about Lina is this. We know that Linda, Lina is difficult, quote, unquote. <clears throat> Will you excuse me? I put my. This is going to be much easier for me. I'm fighting. She never satisfied with the Tunisia pictures in the glossy tourist and official brochures. 
and that is, you know, Tunisia of sunny beaches, jasmine, and olive groves. She did not think that living in a country at peace, where most people had enough to eat on their plate, was enough. She wanted more. And then to students doing jail time for a protest poster, and then to death from torture, and then to the white 404 error page, meaning censorship, <clears throat> on the computer screen. And since the Ben Ali regime was toppled, she continues being difficult. She questioned where the new Tunisia is going. So we know, too, reading her blog, that Lina is fearless. During those very first day in January, she went beyond blogging about demonstration, repression, or snippers on the roof, and live bullets. She, it was a situation quickly getting out of hand, but she drove to the town of Kasrin and Sidi Bouzid, really far-fetched place. And she took with her a cell phone that took pictures, a laptop, a roaming internet connection key, and she took pictures of corpse. She took pictures of the repression. She talked to the people who had lost someone during the demos. And she did that to avoid, like other bloggers, to avoid the Ben Ali's men and the local police wiping away, wipe away the proofs. Because before the 14th of uh, January, that was very well what could have happened and what happened in other part of Tunisia two years late pre first. We know that Lina is loyal. Since then, thousands of Arab citizens, nameless, have lost lives, their lives in the so-called Arab revolutions. Lina takes the time on her blog to remember those people and in their hum to pay homage to those people I'm going to read the same you know, name she wrote. Manuel Boalagi, 26, a mother with two children, killed. Raouf Kadoussi, 26. Mohamed Jabli Ben Ali, 19. Mohad Ben Amor Cliffy, 20. Nizar Ben Ibrahim, 22. Those are the people that were killed during January's riot in remote Tunisian town. Their name have been or already forgotten, save by their relatives and their hometown. But Lina and other bloggers in Tunisia still remember them, write their name, and do not forget about them. And today, I know that Lina is worried. Last month, she wrote on her blog, lately, I'm worried about one single thing, the Tunisia of tomorrow. How will it be? Who is going to manage the country? The people or a new dictatorship? I'm worried, I'm anxious, I'm afraid of losing my identity, my rights as a woman, my freedom to think, to express myself, to dress how I wish, to talk. I'm afraid of losing my freedom of expression, which I have only recently torn away from them. Now we're six months away from the events of January 14th in Tunisia. And of course, we know even from far afar that once in one's lifetime to experiment, to witness that the will of one people is enough to topple a dictatorship, it's a very heady feeling, but it's very pricey and costly too. And right now, the Tunisian revolution, where Tunisian bloggers played a part, has really rocked the world and has really set expectations very high for this country and for those people. And we know that it's now crossing across troubling, troubled waters. You know that talks of postponing election in Tunisia, talks of postponing election in Egypt, and we know that Libya is suffering, and we know that Syria is in hell right now, and we know that we must not forget that Bahrain, another country, has been shocked into silence. So, dear Lina, chère Lina, Mesdames et Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, beyond visceral war that allows to be us together here, this is a crucial moment for bloggers and for us all that live connected to the internet. It's a time, in those times of doubt, it's a time of choice. It's about trust. Who do we choose to believe right now? In some country, the internet is becoming a battleground for political powers where the issues at stake are much bigger than us individual or, blog or blogger. But in this difficult time everywhere in the Arab world, I would like to include in this laudatory speech all bloggers and every bloggers 
or netizens in this room or around the world who strive to resist injustice. And I do hope and encourage them to keep faith and stay safe, really stay safe as much as possible because we need their voice. And to journalists here and to the people of the internet, that is to say us all now in the Western world, I would like to ask of you, stand by them, not only because netizens or bloggers are really essential now, more than ever, to getting diversified and local information on what is becoming a very complex world, but because they are not only pixels, they are not only pawns on a new chessboard where media, social media is playing a political role, because they are our fellow human. So, bravo Lina, and keep hard. <laughs> Lina, could you please step into the center stage if you don't like it? <laughs> Claire? Oh, <laughs> 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 Very pretty. 